Madam President, last week, Congress notched another bipartisan win for the American people. A bill I reintroduced earlier this year, along with Senator Markey from Massachusetts, was signed into law, finally establishing Juneteenth as a national holiday. This bill was unanimously supported in the Senate and got an overwhelming vote in the House of Representatives. And I was honored to be with President Biden at the White House when he signed it into law late last week. And it was even more special to celebrate with my fellow Texans over the weekend. On Saturday, I was honored to spend the very first Juneteenth National Independence Day in Galveston, where Major General Gordon Granger and his troops declared that all slaves were forever free. This happened two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, and just a couple of months after hostilities between the North and the South had ended. But communication being what it is, across a huge country, particularly at that time, it took two and a half years for the message to get to the former slaves in Galveston, Texas, where Juneteenth has been celebrated for many, many years. And in my state alone, we have celebrated Juneteenth for 40 years as a state holiday. I could not have been more happy to take a piece of history with me, a copy of the bipartisan bill that helped preserve the legacy of Juneteenth for generations to come. Madam President, this is just the one item in a significant list of bipartisan accomplishments we've made in an equally divided Senate, which, as we all know, is no small thing. Legislation to confront the growing threats of China, to ensure more businesses can grab onto the lifeline of the Paycheck Protection Program, one of the most significant economic assistance, items of economic assistance that we were able to provide during the COVID-19 virus. We provided states with additional resources to upgrade their drinking water and wastewater infrastructure. And we passed legislation to combat hate crimes against Asian Americans. So the truth is, notwithstanding what it may look like in the news or on cable TV or on social media, every day our colleagues here in the Senate continue to work across the aisle to find consensus and to craft legislation with bipartisan support where we can. I tell people that uh, legislation is hard to pass by design. And our current rules require us to do the hard work of actually building consensus on a bipartisan basis before we can pass legislation, particularly in the Senate. But we continue to do other, our, our work in other important areas, like infrastructure, which has been the subject of so much attention and debate, to do police reform, to deal with the high price of prescription drugs, Republicans and Democrats continue to work together to address some of our most urgent problems. But this week, unfortunately, the majority leader, the senator from New York, has decided to take another tack. He's chosen to spend the Senate's time on partisan legislation that simply has no chance of becoming law.